Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. I'm Naruta Elias, your physics lecturer. Today I'm going to introduce you chapter 3 with the concept of momentum and impulse. Before we start, let's go through the overview of this chapter. We will start with the definition of momentum and impulse and we will continue with the concept of linear momentum, impulse, conservation of momentum and the last one is collision, which is the collision we have elastic and inelastic collision. Before we start our class, let's take a look at the learning outcome for this subtopic 3.1, Momentum and Impulse. At the end of this chapter, students should be able to define momentum and impulse, solve problems related to impulse and impulse momentum theorem given by J equal to delta P equal to MV minus MV initial. And use FT graph to determine impulse. Now we will learn subtopic 3.1.1, linear momentum. What is momentum? Momentum is defined as the product between mass and velocity, which is given by the equation P equal to MV, where the P is momentum, M is mass and V is velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity that has a magnitude MV and the direction the same as the direction of the velocity vector V. And the SI unit for momentum is kilogram meter per second. There are a few examples show that the momentum has magnitude and direction. Number one, we have a uh, momentum of car driving north at 20 meter per second is different from the momentum of the car of the same car driving east at the same speed. This is because the direction affects the momentum. If we have a large object but slow in moving, the object still has a large momentum. This is because when the mass is greater, the momentum is also greater and vice versa. Example number three, a fast moving small object also can have a large momentum. Because the greater the velocity, the greater the momentum and vice versa. And the last one, example number four, we have a car and a truck move with the same velocity 60 meters per second. The truck has greater momentum than the car. Why? This is because the truck is more massive than the car. Since the momentum has direction, so we can resolve it into component X, Y, and Z. But in matriculation syllabus, we only consider two components only. We just consider component X and Y only. Now let's learn subtopic 3.1.2 impulse. We know that momentum is a vector which is equal to the product of mass and velocity. But how is momentum related to impulse? When a force acts on an object for a short time, impulse is the measure of how much the force changes the momentum of the object. For example, momentum changes with time. When a batsman hit the ball, the change in momentum is impulse. What is impulse? Impulse is defined as the product of a force F and the time T and given by the equation J equal to FT. But the J is impulse, force is impulse, F is impulsive force and T is the time interval. Impulse is a vector quantity whose direction is the same as the constant force on the object. And the SI unit of impulse is Newton second or kilogram meter per second. And if the force at on the object is not constant, we integrate the Newton second law over time between the limit T1 and T2. 
So we can define an average net force such that even when the total force is not constant. The average force is also known as the average impulsive force. We can take a look at some example of impulse in everyday life. And the common example is the car airbag system. Airbags are in car in order to reduce the damage to a driver or passenger during a collision. What is airbag does? It increases the time required to stop the momentum of the passenger of, or driver. From equation F equal to J over dt, when the time is longer, the force of impact will decrease. This may reduce severe damage to the passenger. Impulse is also ever present in sport. For example, in golf, baseball, and tennis ball, the faster you swing at the ball, the greater the impulse you impact on the ball. This is because if T is smaller, F becomes greater then the ball will go faster and further away. In football, when the ball is kicked, impulse can help determine the force of the kick if we know the contact time between the foot and the ball. In tennis, whenever a ball is hit back and forth, there is impulse between ball and tennis bracket. Now let's continue with subtopic 3.1.3, Impulse Momentum Theorem. Consider a single force F at on an object in the short time interval. The total F at on an object is equal to the rate of change of momentum, where the value is constant. Therefore, impulse is given by J equal to F dt equal to dp equal to P2 minus P1 where P2 is final momentum, P1 is the initial momentum, and the force is impulsive force. Impulse momentum theorem states that the impulse of a body equals to the change of the body momentum. Since the impulse is a vector quantity, so we can resolve it into x, y, and z component. But in matriculation syllabus, we just only consider two-dimensional collision only. We also can use FT graph to determine impulse. From the graph, the shaded area under the graph is equal to impulse. Here are some exercises related to this subtopic. Hope you can do this exercise to make you understand more about this topic. Now we move to subtopic 3.2, Conservation of Linear Momentum. Let's take a look to the learning outcome for this subtopic. At the end of this chapter, students should be able to state the principle of conservation of linear momentum, differentiate elastic and inelastic collision, Apply the principle of conservation of linear momentum in the elastic and inelastic collision for one-dimensional and two-dimensional collision. However, in this lecture, we only discuss the principle of conservation of linear momentum and collision. For application of the principle, we will discuss it during tutorial class. Now, we start with subtopic 3.1. 3.2.1 Principle of Conservation of Linear Momentum The principle of conservation of linear momentum states that in an isolated closed system, the total momentum of that system is constant. The concept of momentum is particularly important in situations in which we have two or more interacting bodies. Let's consider first an idealized system consisting of two bodies that interact with each other but not with anything else. For example, two astronauts touch each other as they float freely in the zero-gravity environment of outer space. 
things of the astronaut as particles. Each particle exerts a force on each other. According to Newton's third law, the two forces are always equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And there are no external forces. When this is the case, we have an isolated system or closed system. Since these two forces of the body are always equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, and there are no external forces, we consider it as a closed system, so that the total force is equal to zero. Since the rate of change of two momenta are equal and opposite, therefore the rate of change of momentum are equal to zero. The impulses that act on the particle are also equal and opposite in direction, therefore the change in momentum is equal to zero. And same goes to the change in momentum of the two particles which are equal and opposite direction. So we get P2 minus P1 equal to zero. Hence, the total momentum of the system is constant, where P1 equal to P2 equal to constant. Even though the individual momenta of the particles that make up the system can change, but the total momentum is still constant. So we can write it as sum of initial momentum is equal to the sum of final momentum. These are the, the exercises related to this, to this subtopic. Hope you can do these exercises to make you understand more about this subtopic. Now we move to the next subtopic 3.2.2 collision. Collision is defined as an isolated event in which two or more bodies that colliding bodies exert relatively strong forces on each other for a relatively short time. We have two types of collision, elastic collision and an inelastic collision. Let's go further on elastic collision first. Elastic collision is defined as one in which the total kinetic energy as well as total momentum of the system is the same before and after the collision. For example, a head-on collision of two billet balls. Before they collide head-on, both and one M and 2, M1 move with the initial velocity U1 to the right and M2 move with the initial velocity U2 to the left. And after the collision, M1 move with velocity V1 to the left and M2 move with velocity V2 to the right. Even the velocity are different after the collision, the total momentum in the system is still conserved. Same goes to the kinetic energy which is conserved before and after the collision. Or we can write it as half m1 u1 square plus and half m2 u2 square equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. Now let's study about inelastic collision. Inelastic collision is defined as one in which the total kinetic energy of the system is not the same before and after the collision, even though the total momentum of the system is conserved. For example, here we show a completely inelastic collision of two billiard balls. Before the collision, we can see that 
M1 move with initial velocity u1 to the right while M2 is at rest. After the collision, they stick together and move with velocity v to the right. Question. Not all the inelastic collision is stick together. In fact, inelastic collision include many situations in which the body do not stick. Even the total momentum is conserved, but in elastic collision, in inelastic collision, the total kinetic energy is not conserved. Even the total energy of the system is conserved. Let's study case 1 and case 2 for elastic and inelastic collision. In case 1, we can see at first the 1000 kg car moves with velocity 20 m per second to the right, while the 3000 kg truck is at rest. We can calculate the momentum of them by formula mass times velocity mv. Momentum of the car is 20,000 kg m per second and momentum of the truck is zero because it's at rest. So the total momentum before the collision is 20,000 kg m per second. And after the collision, the car moved backward with velocity negative 10 m per second while the truck moved forward with velocity 10 m per second. We can calculate the momentum of the car which is negative 10,000 kg m per second and the momentum of the truck is 30,000 kg m per second. So, the total momentum after the collision is 20,000 kg m per second. This shows that the momentum, total momentum is conserved. To decide whether the collision is elastic or inelastic, we need to compare the total kinetic energy before and after the collision, whether it is conserved or not. By using kinetic energy equation, k equal to half mv square, the kinetic of energy of the car before the collision is 200,000 joule, and the kinetic of the truck is zero because the truck is at rest. Therefore, the total kinetic energy before the collision is 200,000 Joule. After the collision, the kinetic energy of the car is 50,000 Joule, while the kinetic energy of the truck is 150,000 Joule. Therefore, the total kinetic energy after the collision is 200,000 Joule. Since the total kinetic energy before and after the collision is conserved, this means that the collision is elastic collision. In case 2, we can see that before the collision, the 3000 kg truck moved to the right with the velocity 20 m per second, while the 1000 kg car is at rest. The total momentum before the collision is 60,000 kg per second. After the collision, the truck and the car are stick together and move to the right with velocity 15 m per second. We can calculate the momentum of the truck is 45,000 kg m per second and the momentum of the car is 15,000 kg m per second. And the value of the total final momentum is 60,000 kg m per second, same as the before the collision. This shows that the total momentum before and after the collision is conserved. Now, let's decide the type of collision, whether it is elastic or inelastic collision. Before the collision, the kinetic energy of the truck is 600,000 Joule, and the kinetic energy of the car is zero because the car is at rest. Therefore, the total kinetic energy for both are 600,000 Joule. After the collision, the total kinetic energy of the car and truck are 450,000 Joule. Since the total kinetic energy before and after the collision are not equal, this means that the collision is inelastic collision.
Hope you understand and thank you. Thank you for watching.